I'm Professor Megan Kashner of the Kellogg School of Management at Northwestern University. And today I'm pleased to represent many of my colleagues in telling you about a global community of educators, the Impact and Sustainable Finance Faculty Consortium. This consortium is focused on allowing and supporting university faculty as they share research, practice, pedagogy, and innovation. The group is a community of educators, all of whom teach or research in impact investing and sustainable finance. We started in 2017, and today we have over 270 members, all faculty members, adjunct, clinical, tenure, research, uh, from over 135 universities across 28 countries. Members of the consortium collaborate and share research, syllabi, cases, teaching materials, you name it. We gather virtually throughout the year and in person annually here at Northwestern University in Illinois in the United States. If you are a university faculty member, you're teaching undergraduate or graduate students impact investing or sustainable finance, check us out and consider joining. What you'll see in this recording is several members of the Impact and Sustainable Finance Faculty Consortium, and they will be explaining and discussing how we got started, what we do, why it matters, where we fit in the context of the field today, and what each one of them gains from being a member of this broad and deeply connected community. Thanks so much for your interest. You can always find us at impactandsustainablefinance.org. Thanks. I'm a university professor at the School of Business and Economics at Maastricht University in the Netherlands. Um, I'm involved in the world of impact investing for many, many years already, being also a seasoned financial professional uh, in the past and a former GIN, uh, Global Impact Investing Network, that is, um, a, a European liaison. NYU Law, I am what they call an experiential professor. That means I teach not in front of a bunch of students in a large auditorium, but across the table where we represent clients that are trying to do impact investments or social entrepreneurs or other types of organizations that are trying to actually advance business solutions to some of the most wicked problems in today's society. My students who enroll in my class actually act as the lawyers for those transactions and I coach them and mentor them. Lillian Eng, I'm a professor at York University um, with the business school, Shirley School of Business. I'm originally from Singapore. I was trained in the US, got my PhD from Wharton. I've been doing research and my current research is in ESG. Hello everyone. My name is Daniel Ortega. I'm a faculty member and director of the Center of Public Policy Development at the Paul Polytechnic University in Ecuador. Um, the focus of our center is on mainstream and sustainable development into policy and practice. And as such, we have been promoted by economy as a transitional model to our dependency on, on oil and, and fossil fuels. And at the same time, we are promoting the use of sustainable finance instruments as a vehicle to achieve that transition. We conduct both research and teaching and we associate this to the School of Management, SPI, that is part also of this university. And we uh, promote uh, course courses on uh, social and responsible, uh, um, corporate social responsibility, uh, sustainable finance, uh, sustainability strategies, and carbon management. I'm Dave Chen, and I'd like to uh, just uh, briefly introduce myself. I'm a uh, adjunct professor of finance at uh, Kellogg, and I've taught now for the first, uh, for now 13 years, uh, what I think was one of the first classes in uh, sustainable finance and impact investing and treating it like a core finance class. Uh, I'm also uh, been uh, one of the co-founders of the Kellogg Morgan Stanley Sustainable Investing Challenge, and also one of the co-founders of this consortium. And uh, I'm also, uh, my day job is that of uh, CEO and founder of Equilibrium Capital, 
which we formed about 13, 14 years ago and uh, is one of the major investment groups in uh, applying institutional capital to uh, sustainability investment themes. The Rockefeller Foundation asked us if there was something else that we could be doing at Kellogg and in the context of the work that we were doing with the Sustainable Investing Challenge, what they had been a sponsor of, that would um, accelerate the development of this sector, especially in the development of uh, the new investment professionals and the next generation of investment professionals within the context of sustainability, climate change, our social equality issues, broadly defined sustainability and impact. And the, the answer that we gave Rockefeller was that uh, the sense that, 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 and this was 2017, we felt that we were starting to get to an inflection point. And, and that was, you could see the professionalization of the investment sector around these topics. I would say in general, we, we, you know, as early as the late 2008, 9, 10, 11 period, a lot of the conversation in acad academia and, and, and more importantly, among the students in MBA programs were in the clubs, sustainability clubs, or around things like microfinance and a little bit at that time around social enterprise. Uh, and, and, and a lot of the coursework that was available at the time centered around these topics and they centered around case examples. And what we started to see happening in 2017 was that the kind of jobs and employers were changing from the early, the early kinds of investing uh, uh, positions to now, uh, then they, they evolved to a lot of what I would call strategy jobs, where they were trying to forecast the future or to write white papers about sustainability in the investment uh, uh, sector, to then all of a sudden people were starting to ask, what's a sustainability ETF? What's a, uh, a, uh, a gender lens ETF? What are the private equity strategies? What are hedge fund strategies around climate? And you could see the signaling that, that this was becoming a, a call legitimized institutional uh, investment area. And what I said to the, 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 the team at Rockefeller was that we needed to um, make sure that, uh, that, and especially at a time when the industry was changing, that the level of curriculum, uh, the level of, of I'll call it research driven uh, in, uh, uh, teaching frameworks, the case studies, the teaching tools, uh, we're starting now to be, uh, become pretty sophisticated and serious and that we need to gather the uh, faculty. Most of them were adjuncts at the time, but I think we were also surprised when we started looking how many uh, tenure track faculty and research driven faculty were also starting to teach. And there was an important time to gather everyone together across the world to, um, and because we were in that phase when things were formational, uh, to get people to actually actively share things about how they were teaching and best practices, and to use this not only to share and learn from each other, but to actually foster the development and legitimization of the next generation of, of teaching tools. The world is changing rapidly. Maybe you've heard of it, but recently a Dutch court decided that Royal Dutch Shell is obliged to respect the Paris Agreement on Climate Change. As a result, the company has to reduce its CO2 emissions by 45% at the end of 2030, compared with 2019. What is so intriguing about the verdict is actually that it links Shell's environmental performance to the rights of humans and most specifically the right to life. The interests of the people of the Netherlands apparently outweigh, according to the court, those 
of Shell, despite the fact that Shell did not act unlawfully. Although the company actually will appeal the court's decision, the fact is that Shell has to reckon with courts influencing the environment in which it operates. If future court decisions uphold the verdict, this will have a direct financial implication for the value of the company's assets. In addition, I would say, it will affect the value of investments made in fossil fuels and in fossil fuel companies. So apart from any legal or moral argument against the exploration and exploitation of fossil fuels, one can particularly make a financial analysis of the social and environmental risks associated with investments in companies like Shell. Increasingly, the value of Shell's assets will be under pressure. Now, the next generation of talented uh, investment professionals and students understands the importance of cases like this, but they may not have the right arguments, tools, or graffitas yet to influence corporate decision making. And it's precisely here where the consortium can and does provide assistance aimed at creating long-term value, financial value, social value, and environmental value. So in the past, I did asset pricing. My work is more um, academic, very, very academic. And when you get older in the field, you, you get to do what you enjoy most. And I'm a person, I'm a very green person. I, I care about the environment. I care about the trees. I do not, I try not to print papers if I don't have to, because I was just thinking how many trees I need to cut in order to print those hard copies of my papers. So I try to live reading my papers on, you know, on my iPad or on my phone instead of printing out a hard copy. So that got me really, interested in the, the real issues like the climate change, which we can see that, I mean, the wild forests in California, the hurricanes, and, you know, even in Australia, and the melting in the, uh, at the poles, all these are real issues that affect us, not only affect us now, they affect the future generations to come. So I thought that this research would be very important, not just for myself, it's also for people, I mean, for the human, for society in general. And that's one of the reasons why I like to teach it next year. And I, I did mention to you that I'm going to teach sustainable finance. And the reason is, it is important not just to do research, it's, it's to convey your message, to educate the next generation so that they can apply what, we learn, what they learn from me to be more socially responsible as a human being and as a part of the society to, pro to protect the mother's earth. That's, that's how I see uh, the importance of my research and how, why I'm so excited about what I'm doing. In many ways, we're serving a number of constituent groups. And, and I think this consortium can play a major role in, you know, first and foremost, uh, we're serving the interests of the students and their need to become increasingly sophisticated and disciplined in how they think about this topic and how they think about planning a career and actually qualifying for a career. I think we serve the, uh, the corporations uh, or the organizations that are going to be hiring our, our graduates because they themselves have evolved from questioning to strategy to now execution, uh, whether it's the development of products, processes, or investment strategies. And, and I think that, that, that we owe it to them to uh, uh, prepare our students so that they can be contributors on day one. And, and I think that we are also playing a role of informing the research that's necessary 
uh, uh, again, to push this field forward. I, I think this is becoming a discipline. And I, and I think that there are a number of aspects that, that, that in, in many ways strike at the very core of the functional disciplines that we teach in business school. I think one of the most exciting areas, for example, in accounting is the, is the issue of, of the cost accounting of, of externalities, uh, the embedding of, of externalities into pricing, returns, models, et cetera, that, that have both the managerial cost accounting aspect of it, as well as in terms of asset pricing, which asset pricing has, has been the core of the last 40 years of finance and the volatility of asset pricing. Well, how do these things now impact uh, the, the, the pricing models. So I think we're now taking the, uh, I'll call it the practitioner's view, the job view, and now informing the, the, the research or the new tools and theorems that are gonna be necessary in order to, to actually move us into this climate adaptation phase of, of, I don't know, whether you call it our society or our history, it's now at that level of importance. I'm truly pleased with the consortium and um, the initiative that the Kellogg School of Management together with the Rockefeller Foundation took. Um, it should be praised. And for, for several reasons, because in the past, as I mentioned before, there was already some teaching in sustainable finance sustainable investing particularly. But bringing all these experiences, all the knowledge, all the tools, all the challenges together, discuss it and share that knowledge and those tools and the challenges and the expertise. That is something that is so amazing and so really relevant for building not only an academic profile and an academic profession, but certainly also disseminating the knowledge to the field of practice. And that is probably one of the most important things that the consortium already has done. It builds a community. In the past, we were all silos. Now we communicate and share those experience and ideas. And we have this vision that we can share with others, challenge each other. So that is something, it's a great marketplace for ideas and for action. When I first came to this consortium, I wondered how open people would be to having a law professor in this community. And what I found is that I was welcomed with open arms. And I have found that for me, by working with and across different disciplines and seeing how faculty from different disciplines teach in this area of impact investing and sustainable finance, that my own teaching has improved. So for example, I have now started to think about as I equip my law students with the skills to be able to address and respond to some of the most difficult, challenging environmental and societal issues in today's world, I am now more actively finding ways to put them in situations where they can work in a multidisciplinary or cross-disciplinary educational experience. If they don't learn it here, then they're only going to learn it on the job. And that is inefficient. And in some ways, it may not work all that well. So I have started to think about much more intentionally how to bridge between what I do in a law school classroom and what colleagues in schools of public policy, in business, in finance, and find ways that we can bring our students together, either really bring them together virtually or in the same classroom, or bring them together through the teaching tools that we're creating together within the consortium. The first time that I joined the consortium, I, I definitely find a source of inspiration by learning what others were doing on their own home countries and universities. I also find opportunity to le learn lessons 
that they have uh, identified through their efforts, and also an opportunity to share best practices. I think that those three elements really um, were a mix of, uh, um, of ideas that allow us to also mobilize and, 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 and give form to our, our own efforts. Um, and then uh, through the consortium, I believe we have a source of knowledge. A, we believe it's a knowledge platform that supports our academic efforts, both educational and research. The availability of syllabi, the, the availability of, of, of case studies that are shared permanently by others and the research projects really are, are, are a source of transformational energy. I wasn't aware that there was syllabi posted on the website and after the meeting I I went searching downloaded many of the uh, outlines honestly I did that and I have not really designed a course outline that uh, for the because I'm not teaching in this sem next semester I'll be teaching in the winter so I'm going to be uh, gathering the course outlines and try to build one that is more tailored to my style. So the syllabi was very, very useful. I also have a couple of um, teaching notes. Um, um, there are some articles that were posted. They were extremely, extremely helpful. And I like to listen to what they, what they do in class, how they conduct their classes. So class cases will be important. I'm looking into the cases. I'm looking into the teaching notes, the course outlines to see what are covered and what are not covered. And mainly what I'm gonna do at the end of the day is that the course outline has to be, I'm gonna be doing, I mean, I'm the researcher as well. So for be, being a researcher is important because I research, I know, I read the literature and I want to teach not only the current events, I'll be able to develop the course the way I see it, the way I see the problems and suggestions and the results that I find in my own uh, research as well as in research uh, in other research uh, findings. I think this will be important for the class. Here's a concrete way that being part of this consortium has changed the way I do things. By getting exposure to the different case studies that professors are using to teach these issues in their classrooms and get their students passionately involved in them, I've started to understand where the holes are, where there need to be new cases created, and what role I could play as a law professor in trying to respond to some of those holes. So for example, I now have started developing a series of case studies that are by definition multidisciplinary, because I realized I needed these types of case studies, but I needed them in a legal context, not just a finance, not in just a public policy context. And I don't know if I would have had a sense of the landscape if I hadn't been part of this consortium. I may have continued to do something I've been doing for several years, which is to take business case studies and then try to adapt them to a, a law school classroom. Now I've taken the bull by the horns. And I've said, no, I'm going to sit down with some of my fellow professors from other disciplines, and we are going to create case studies together that could be used in multiple classrooms, multiple disciplines, multiple countries. We have also found an opportunity that through the consortium, we can build opportunities for cross-collaboration. And that's why we have presented a, a, a proposal to understand what is happening in different countries of Latin America that could only be possible through the consortium. Yeah, and uh, I didn't have that availability of contacts and networks to conduct that research. Um, additionally, uh, the consortium has been a source of direct funding for developing our own instructional and material development. And uh, to be fully frank, we also perceive that, that through the consortium, we have been able to identify and access seed funding for incubating uh, a, a demand-driven academic program that we are just about to implement in the next few weeks. So um, in soon, uh, we, we believe the consortium has been an enabling factor to develop our efforts and through them uh, assist the country and support the country efforts on, on, on the use and implementation of sustainable finance instruments. 
First and foremost, um, let's take some of the major themes that fall in under the sustainability and impact umbrella. Uh, one is climate, uh, whether that's climate change, climate adaptation. Um, a second one is, is a global trend towards uh, social inequality and the spreading social gap. And and then just plain old the sustainable use of our resources in a you know a growing uh, developed country uh, world that we live in and when you think about all those themes they affect different parts of the world uh, at maybe different rates but they affect the entire world you know uniformly in, in some ways and and everyone's going to be Every school is going to be touched by it, and, and there'll be students from every one of those institutions and countries that are going to be asking, how can they play a role? How can they play a role? And how can they develop a career in this? And so I think that, that and again, we all acknowledge that it's different by culture, it's different by the stage of development of the country or the economy, it's different by the culture, uh, uh, it's different by their business climate. But these issues are going to cut across, and and I think that, that that we just felt that the consortium needed to be a big tent umbrella, and 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 make room, acknowledge the differences, but at the same time set the expectation that the bar and the sophistication, and the legitimization was real. NYU Law School, I actually teach an international transactions clinic. That means that everything I do crosses borders. And what I've really enjoyed about the consortium is how many borders it also crosses. I've been talking a little bit today about the disciplinary borders that it crosses, but the national borders that it crosses are also very important to me, my growth, my development, and what I can bring home to my university and the, the classroom that I teach in. It has been terrific to have an opportunity to hear about some of the problems that my clinic works on from those who are actually living in the countries where these problems are most prevalent. And I have really come to appreciate the deep conversations that I can have with colleagues who can tell me from the ground what they're experiencing, what they're seeing, and how they are trying to bring these issues to light in the classrooms where they are operating. I'm a researcher. I don't have the practical aspect of it. So it is important that I will be inviting a couple of speakers who practice um, impact investing or responsible investing to my class to give a last like, 30 minutes of what, how they approach the issues, how they price the loan, how they um, you know, advise corporations to behave responsibly. And by interacting with these people who teach and they are practitioners, I know they are practitioners and they teach in very renowned universities, it's a good way of exchanging uh, information to learn from them. I, I like to learn from them how they approach the teaching aspect of it. Uh, I have the research aspect of it. I have the academic aspect of it. So they provide me their practical aspect of uh, teaching the class. And I, I think this is a very useful and consortium provide me the opportunity to interact with them, to listen to how they approach the issues and probably what cases they think would be most relevant to have an impact on the topic that we are gonna be discussing in class. So I hope that over time, I'll be participating more in this consortium. And then I'll be able to, by then I hope I'll be able to share with them what I teach and what research findings I have that I can bring into the, the, the different topics that are going to be covered, for example, green bonds, green finance. So this is something that I'll be doing. This is my next project. The networking that we have been able to develop, one is, is academic and, and is related with international institutions, both in, uh, in, in Europe, North America, but also in Latin America. We have been able to access sustainable finance institutions in Europe that are, are conducting research 
and that I'm providing executive training to public servant and, 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 and staff of private finance institutions. And um, because of that learning and, and ex particular experience on executive program, we have been able to develop our own. In terms of the US contacts, those are more research related uh, and networking uh, uh, that allow us to be at the forefront of the research in terms of monitoring and measuring impact, which we believe is, is, is a major frontier for unleashing the sustainable finance potential and streamline the use of it as other, any other regular instruments. And in terms of the contacts in Latin America, it, have been, it has allowed us to strengthen our own capacities to offer a joint educational programs that could compete with uh, uh, very prestigious uh, universities around the world. Um, if, if, you, if you notice from our, from our collaboration with the Universidad de Los Andes and Tech of Monterrey, you are putting together three of the most competitive universities in the region, but in terms of joining efforts instead of competing, most of what the rankings do is that they allow us to compete to be which one could be the best. But instead of doing that, we have, you are joining efforts uh, just in the same philosophy that sustainable finance promotes impact on society and the environment. I, 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 I should acknowledge that, that type of, of, of contacts. And through these three different type of academic uh, uh, networking, we have been able to access uh, both uh, United Nations based efforts like Global Compact to showcase and disseminate what we do, but also we have strength our own case to expose it and mobilize additional support from the International Finance Corporation, from the American Development Bank. And, as, and we believe as we continue to do so, we will continue to access alternative funding opportunities that at the end of the day, not only support the implementation of our efforts, but provide legitimacy and allow us to convene a very strong message within our own countries. Uh, so uh, we believe that consortium offers all those three dimensions. In some ways, when we started this in 2017, um, we wanted to make this less of a conference and more of a workshop in the sense that, that uh, everyone in the room was in the same boat. We all shared the same experience. We had to stand in front of a room full of students and uh, hopefully impart something of, of value to them. And, and everyone in that room shares that same desire to do a great job. And so I think that what you find in that room is um, camaraderie. And because you're all educators, um, you're there with a sense of purpose, uh, which is that we want to educate the next generation. And so I think that, that unlike a conference, this really is, um, you know, whether you use the word birds of a feather, whether you use uh, a gathering uh, where it's all about uh, self-teaching or, or shared teaching of each other, I, I think that's the spirit that we wanted to build into this gathering was that we were all going to leave there with uh, a better appreciation, a better lesson plan and insight that we would be dying to go into our classrooms and use uh, the next day. And, and, and so I would say that, that the, the dominant phrase or the dominant words are sharing and camaraderie. I've been part of this consortium for several years, and I was actually told about it by a fellow law professor. I must admit, when I first came to the first convening uh, in Illinois, I sort of wondered, why am I here? But what I have found is that I found my tribe, my tribe of professors who are also trying to instill in their students and, it, and, and frank, frankly respond to the demand of our students for the skills and know-how to really address some of the world's biggest problems, um, but to do so out of their respective disciplines. So what have I found at this consortium? I have found a group of people who inspire me by how they teach, what they teach, the challenges that they're facing in their respective universities. And it's a place where we really share 
um, it's a safe place for sharing where we can bring our problems and bring our joys and celebrate with each other our accomplishments. It's so engaging because people are so interested in what happens elsewhere in the world. And we can learn a lot from that. Um, so in recent conversations um, that I had with other consortium members, I learned what happened in Latin America, for instance, which is completely uncomparable to what is happening in Europe and what is happening in the US or nowadays increasingly friends from, um, from Asia are joining the consortium. Fantastic. We can learn a lot and we can build that community and that agenda that we're all looking forward to. And that is to contribute to a better world. Time I walked into this convening, I was a little nervous. And I sat down at a round table and that should have told me a lot about what was going to happen, which is I was in the middle of a circle. And that circle was in the middle of another circle. And what I have found happening is that we end up talking with each other as equals. No one is at the head of the table. No one is at the foot of the table. We are all there in our own right, deserving to be there and welcomed. way forward for the consortium is at least one of the things that the consortium could do is involve more institutional investors and their representative bodies, collaborate with them and demonstrate the positive outcomes of networking. Institutional investors are a force for change and we have the ideas, they have the capital. If we can build a coalition, that would be fantastic. The International Center for Pension Management, ICPM, for instance, in Canada, already provides an excellent example. But a larger and more comprehensive movement is required. I would say sustainable investors of the world unite. A second, we need to speak up and raise our voice by issuing petitions and calls for more active policies and practices by investors, banks, but also by governments and multilateral organizations. And thirdly, I would say it would be great, and that's very pragmatic, to lobby for a seat for next year's World Economic Forum and organize workshops at the forum. I'm pretty sure that the forum is open to what we have to say. And it provides an excellent podium for communicating our ideas, insights, and contributions to a more sustainable world. Expanding our, our networking and our joint efforts to other uh, developing regions is, is one of our major challenges. We, we have identified the need to learn what is happening within those uh, uh, contexts and learn from them. We believe that the consortium can allow that expansion. Uh, we just needed to first have um, something concrete to share with them as well, so that the cross collaboration could be an unequal basis. So uh, we believe that as we move forward in our efforts, we will be able to be in a better position to collaborate. Uh, in particular uh, with Asia, we notice that they have made great progress and advances with respect to sustainable finance. And with respect to Africa, we believe we share some of the chain challenges also to develop it. So um, we really look forward to expanding our cross collaboration through the consortium with these two regions. Is the uh, alliance uh, that we're developing with UN Prime, I think speaks to in, in some ways, the last question, and, and that was that these issues of how finance uh, 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 plays a role within the, some of the major issues in sustainability, as we said, social equality, climate adaptation, 
uh, sustainable use of resources. Uh, these are now global issues. And we know that with the leadership of the UN through the UN PRI, uh, through the UN Global Compact, uh, that, that, that they themselves have, have created this mission of how can we not only use, uh, uh, share around the world through the countries, um, uh, the solutions, but the knowledge, and now I think the idea that this is part of an educational process, not only ongoing education of, of, of postgraduates, but of the, of the schools itself. And I think that, that, that again, these are things that, that, that support those larger missions like the SDGs uh, with uh, the, 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 uh, the all critical uh, education of our next generation.